Hello, today I will be talking about organic molecular structures. This time I will be talking about naming and drawing more complex carbon chains. So we'll start with the structures. Here we have the hydrocarbon structures and categories, which we know include the basic alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. In alkanes, all carbon atoms are singularly bonded. They all have a single bond to each other. In the alkenes, the chain contains one double bond. So a double bond is present in one of the carbon bonds in the alkenes group. And in the alkynes, there will be a triple bond in this carbon chain. Here are some important suffixes to remember when naming and drawing these more complicated carbon structures. So depending on the ratio of carbon atoms to hydrogen atoms, which I presented in another video about naming and drawing basic organic molecules, these following endings are important to know. The ain, the ene, and the ein. These distinguish what chains you're dealing with depending on the ratio corresponding to each of the alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. When we're dealing with branches, this is groups that branch off of the main carbon chain, we use the suffix YL here. So rules for naming the continuous chain. We find the longest continuous chain and determine its proper prefix. I have listed prefixes and gone over them before in another video of naming and drawing basic organic molecules. So these prefixes are based on the number of carbon atoms that are in the consecutive chain. And what I mean by consecutive chain is the longest continuous chain in the carbon structure. Afterwards, we determine what suffix it needs, either the ain, ene, or ein, depending on the ratio, whether it's an alkane, alkene, or alkyne group. And we determine this based on the number of bonds. As we said before, the alkane has all single bonded carbons, the alkene has at least, or has one double bond carbon, and the alkyne group has a triple bond in the carbon structure. If the chain appears in a ring or circular form, the prefix we use is cyclo. So as in a cycle, as in a circle. The cyclo molecules do it know by a specific symbol that is commonly used. It is this symbol that shows it's a cyclo, depending on how many corners there are. So these would be carbons right here in the corners. As you can see, this is just an example as it is a cyclo group. It forms a ring. If other molecules than hydrogen appear in the chain, as hydrocarbons are consist of only carbons and hydrogens, the following terminology is used. Para, meaning on opposite ends. Meta, means in the middle. And ortho, means next to. This will make more sense later when I start doing the examples in this video. So moving on to the branches. The branch, as we said before, ends in the suffix yl. The names of the branches will go before the name of the chain. And if multiple branches are present, they are organized in alphabetical order. To, deter to determine the position of the branch, the continuous carbon chain is numbered starting from the side closest to the first branch. When a double or triple bond does occur, such as in the alkene or alkyne group, using the name numbering system as the branches, we count the number of carbons to that bond, and the number will be written before for the name of the continuous carbon chain, but after the naming of the branches. Okay, so here I will start with some examples. These should help clarify what I said before. So for the cyclo group, I'm going to use the example C6H10. So six carbons and ten hydrogens. Since we know that this is a cyclo group, because usually you would be given the name cyclohexene. So cyclohexene. So to start from this, we notice that the cyclo is here, which tells us that it is a cyclo group, which means it is circular. And the hexene corresponds to what I just wrote in the formula here. Usually this would be given before you come up with this. We have six carbons, so we'll draw those in the circular form right here. One, two, three, four, four, five, six, and since this is an ene group, it will contain at least one double bond. 
I'll start off with the double bond here. Because since it's a cyclo group, it doesn't matter where you put the double bond. Because no matter where you look at it, the double bond could be in different positions based on how you're viewing the molecule. So the rest of these will become single bonds. Usually, for every carbon, every carbon forms four bonds, and then the rest will be hydrogen. So this has one, two bonds, and then we'll add two more, and then these would be paired with hydrogen. Here, since we already have three, we only need one more hydrogen, and so on with the other carbons. So moving on to the para, meta, and ortho. These terms occur in the cyclo group. So I will draw the generic cyclo formula, or the generic cyclo symbol here, and in para, we said para means the opposite. So an opposite, let's say we use chlorine here, so Cl here and Cl here. These two are opposite, thus it's a para group. Now meta means middle, so if we had Cl here, excuse me, let me, let me erase that, I don't know why it's doing this. Okay, sorry about that. So if we have CL here, meta would mean middle. So being in the middle, it would be right here. This would be aligned as meta being in the middle. The last one is ortho, meaning next to, in a way. I'll draw this symbol again. And let's say we use the same formula CL. Ortho would appear right here with the CL, so right next to. So for the simple chain, over here, the simple chain. I'll start with the formula 2-methylpropane. So 2-methylpropane. So in 2-methylpropane, we know that this is... We'll look at this side first, the propane part. This propane represents a single carbon chain, the straight carbon chain. So we know that propane is has three carbons, so C3. So we'll start by drawing the first chain. So this is the propane chain. Then we move on to the left here. Oh, and by the way, let me mention that since this is an ane, we know that these are all one single bonded carbons. So now we move to the two methyl. Counting from any side at this point, because we have no branches here to start from, or reference to, we have to draw this first branch. So we'll start from the side, whichever one you prefer. I'm going to start from the left side and we'll count two. So this is the first carbon and this is the second carbon right here. So two methyl means that this, this is the second branch with the two and it will have a methyl group, which means an additional C right here, the methyl group. As we saw before, the roots, the meth means one carbon, so C1 essentially. Note that there are hydrogens attached to these carbons, but I am not doing those now and here for the sake of time. So a harder chain. Let's move on to a harder one. This time I will draw the chain and we will name it. I'll draw, let's do three C's here. Let's do, here's one, here's another. Let's go over here. Let me start over here for this one. Excuse me, start over here, and this one. Try those. So here's the harder chain. First, we start by finding the most continuous carbon chain, which, as I can see, is not this one here, because this is pretty short. Not this one by itself, not this one by itself, but rather this whole continuous carbon chain right here. By carbon chain, it does not necessarily have to be straight as this one. You see this one, how this one is straight? We can draw it in this format and use this as the longest carbon chain in naming them. So, in fact, we could do a complete right angle here, we could go backwards here, but when we're naming these, we look for the longest carbon chain, which is all the way right here as I drew in red. Now that we know that this is the straight chain, we know that we have these two branches right here. So let's start with the branches themselves. We have two methyl branches since they both contain one carbon. So we'll start with the two meth with the one carbon each with correspond to the two and we add the Y L suffix over here. So two methyl and now we move to the longest chain. 
So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six carbons. These six carbons will turn into hex, the prefix of this chain. So hex, and since they all contain a single bond, we call them hexane, with the ane ending. Uh, excuse me, I just made a mistake here with the methyl. My mistake. So with the methyl, it's not two. I was mistaken because I thought these two. But in fact, the steps show that we need to start from the side closest and then count to where the chains are. So instead of two, since we have two over here, instead of the number two, I should have used the word die as the prefix because we're already using the two in naming where they are located on the branch. So starting from the side closest, since they're, since they're both equal, equal distant from the ends of the carbon chain, since there's two carbons here until we get to this one, two carbons here until we get to this one, it doesn't really matter. So I'll start from the bottom here and we'll go one, two, three. This is the third section of the carbon chain. So we have three and we over here we have in the fourth, it's attached to the fourth carbon. So 3,4-dimethylhexane, that's the full name of this chain. Lastly, let's move on to this double bond here. I'm going to work on this one in this empty space right here. So in the double bond, I'm going to give you the formula 3-methyl-2-pentene. Okay, and let me put dashes in between just to make these more clearer. So 3-methyl and 2-pentene. This is all one formula. But let's start with the chain itself, the pentene chain. You know that pentene, pent, has five carbons. So pentene is C5. So we'll start with one, two, three, four, five. I have a straight chain of five carbons. And since we know that it's an ene group, pentene, we need to know where to put the double bond. So in order to know where to put the double bond in this ene group, that's why we have this number system in front. The two tells us that the double bond goes on the second carbon. So I'm going to start from the left side here and count one, two. So the second carbon will have a double bond on it. And now let's move on to the branch. We have the three methyl branch. We know it's only one because we don't have the dye symbol as we have right here. It's only one methyl group and it's only on the three section, third carbon, excuse me. So we count one, two, three, this is the third carbon, and we have the third methyl branch right here. And obviously the hydrogens are attached into these carbons, but I'm just leaving these out for the sake of time in this video. And also note that most of the time, the hydrogens do fill up all the carbons. In structural isomers, these consist of different carbon chains that can be achieved with the same formula. So for example, C4H10. In this formula, we can write the straight carbon chain C4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and H10. We can add the H's to each of these. Pretty much this is butane. But however, we could also write it in this format. In this format, it is called 2-methylpropane. So they have the same generic formula, but a different chemical formula. I'm sorry, I'm having technological issues with these random lines that are showing up, so please just excuse them for the moment. In this, we know that this is an isobutane chain. It can appear in many different formats. The names tell us which format it can appear. In actuality, this is the true format of how it appears. So how do we distinguish between these different geometries? We use the term cis and trans. These terms are used to distinguish between different carbon chains of the same formula. So the word cis means branches that are on the same plane. Trans means opposite planes. Also note that the previous term cyclo that I was referring to is refers to a ring or chain and is not rather a straight chain in which we use cis or trans with. So as an example, I have 2-butene. In naming this, if we are given the formula cis-2-butene, we would draw the structure 
with branches on the same plane, because cis means on the same plane. By that, we mean we would draw it like one carbon, another carbon, another carbon, and the final carbon for the butene here. And since this is a two, we know that the double bond goes on the second carbon, which is pretty much in the middle. So this cis tells us that these carbons are attached on the same plane. So pretend this is a plane. These carbons are attached on the same plane, the same level. And that's why, and that's how we know how to draw these versus a straight chain or on opposite planes where this carbon would probably be down here or this one would probably be on the opposite end. So the other one is trans. So trans to butene uses the same amount of carbons, but rather trans means on opposite planes. So we would draw the same generic formula here, but instead of being on the same plane up here, it would be down here on the opposite planes for the carbon. So in cis, we have the carbons on the same plane, and in the trans, we have the carbons on the opposite plane. So thank you for watching this video, and I hope you learned something new today.